I also went uh, to Sulaymaniyya and Erbil in the northern part. At that time, it was very dangerous. Right after the Kuwait Gulf War, uh, UN wanted me to go and document what he was doing to the Kurdish people, and he gassed them, and a lot of them were napalm bombs. I think the Bosnia War uh, was a rude awakening for all of us, too, because uh, uh, we, that's when we started to realize how all this different ethnic cleansing and people with different ideology or beliefs, you know, how they went to such an extreme to kill the other uh, uh, tribe or whether it's the other uh, sect. And this boy is a Muslim boy. He was studying in a cubicle, and the Serbian soldier threw a Molotov cocktail, and he was totally burnt, and I did a story about him. And six months later, the French press, after they picked up the story, they sent for this boy to come to Paris, and they did a full skin graft for him. And I went to Rwanda, of course, and um, in 94, and I, it, 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 it had a big effect on me when I came back. I had a massive nervous breakdown. I almost came very close to killing myself, and I'm very lucky that I'm alive, and I'm very happy. Uh, I got out of it, and I, I'm not ashamed to talk about it because I think I, I know what I went through during that period. And um, after that, I almost quit photography, and I was going through my therapy, and uh, one day, I was having a beer in my backyard in Queens, and I saw this in my neighbor's backyard. So I ran inside, loaded a roll of film, and I shot 36 frames of this swallowtail coming back. And the next day, I went back, and I even told my psychiatrist that I think I'm feeling better, and he didn't believe me. So, so I went back to work. So now, the new me, and I did some books for children, uh, about my experience, and I go and speak about it. I did a book on the endangered peoples of the tribal or ethnic minority people in different parts with Art Wolf, and Art Davidson was the writer. We did this for Sierra Club. And I was very fortunate to work with Audrey Hepburn, and I always take a lot of pride because she was my good friend, and I also learned something from her. My mother taught me the same thing and later I worked with Mother Teresa and Audrey. They all taught me something about dignity, not about our own dignity, but other people's dignity, and that's what, to respect others' dignity. So the reason why I have her pictures, because she chose this as her all-time favorite photograph, and when American Photo was gonna run this picture, they said, could we airbrush her uh, wrinkles? Would you ask her, you know, we're gonna, do this in a special issue. So when I asked her, she said, John, tell them not to mess with it. I've earned every one of those lines, you know, so. <laughs> now I want to show you a little bit of my UN work, which this is for food. They're winnowing rice, and we were talking about the art of seeing. And on a midday, uh, I photographed this in India. They are winnowing rice, separating it, separating it from the husk. This is my hometown, Chennai, the beach. Sometimes you divide your thirds in a different way. So these are some of the pictures uh, that won some awards for me. Sometimes a monochromatic picture like this in China works very well. Uh, a junk boat in fog. And this is in Oregon, Cannon Beach. And this is their block printing saris in India. My first digital uh, picture was, not the first one, but my first published picture. This was in, uh, with a four megapixel. I did this for Olympus. And I've been working with them because they've been very receptive to some of my ideas and all of it. For the last 10 years, I've been with them. and. Um, uh, this is when I started to realize that digital is here to stay, and you know, so uh, I was very fascinated by the coal miners. So when they asked me, whatever kind of advertisement you want to do, we'll set it up for you. So I told them I want to go to Appalachia and spend some time with the coal miners and do a picture. So this is what they did as an ad. 
I was in Africa for the day in a life of Africa, uh, carrying my four megapixel digital camera. I was in Chad. This is in Inner Mongolia, the Mongolian horsemen rounding up. This is one of my favorite pictures in Pakistan because being an Indian, just because I worked at the UN, I was able to go there several times. And these girls were studying together and this also received a couple of awards, but it also is a poster that UNICEF did on education for women. And this is a favorite photograph uh, of Audrey Hepburn. She uh, uses this in her foundation. They still use it in their brochures. Some of the travel pictures I wanted to show because um, this is in Morocco, in Tetuan, the blue walls. This is, again, one of my favorite pictures from uh, Morocco. Uh, it's called Fantasia. They ride their horses and fire their guns. But I knew if I had executed this picture, it will be something different or timeless. So I was happy that I have a few images like this from that particular day. Recently, I was in India. This is just two months ago, this big holy festival. So. Uh, where they throw colors at each other. And um, India is a very fascinating place to photograph. I know Eddie Adams, one time he told me, just blindfold me and give me a 24 millimeter lens and I'll just go around shooting and I'll come back with winners. So <laughs> after all these years traveling to 120 countries, after I left the UN, I started to discover America. And also four years ago, I became an American. And I'm very proud of that. And um, now I'm visiting all the national parks, and I have a special assignment to do certain things for the park, so I'm working on that. Grand Canyon, when I went, I must tell you, like when I saw it for the first time early morning when the sun was coming up, and I was there, and I just knelt down and I started to cry because it was so emotional. I haven't seen anything in that scale. It was absolutely stunning. And I'm I want to show you a little bit of what I'm doing now because I was not a wildlife photographer, but now I'm sort of getting better at it. Wildlife photography is really difficult and it's also very intriguing and it teaches me patience, you know. So India has a, a good selection of animals, but the reason I got into tigers is because they stand such a thin chance that uh, I'm even a little skeptical about the survival because until recently they said we have uh, 1,500 tigers, but just now, a few months ago, they released saying that there's hardly 800 tigers left in India. So this is something between China believing that it's aphrodisiac, any part of tiger, by the time they kill a tiger, take it to uh, China through Tibet, it's about $500,000 on each tiger. It is sad, and I, uh, so I, I, luckily I have a couple of sponsors who are trying to help me work on this project. And uh, since I'm new to wildlife, uh, I'm making several trips, and uh, I'm also learning a lot about the tigers. I want to leave you with a thought that my mother taught me when I was a kid. It's about today, it's an old Sanskrit proverb. Look to this day, for it is life, the very life of life. In its brief course lie all the realities and principles of existence, the bliss of growth, the splendor of action, the power of glory. Yesterday was just a dream, and tomorrow is only a vision, but today well lived makes every yesterday a dream of happiness, and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore, to this day. Thank you.